Superfish have done it again. They sent us a whole nother kit tank. Now this is actually one of their most popular tanks. So I probably don't need that much promotion for it, but I thought I'd build it anyway and see what all the fuss is about. This one's a cube with like a built-in light system. And there's also a filter that runs down the back corner as well. And then we've got this one here that we set up as well, which is completely thriving and doing really great. And we've also got this tank over here that's got our green neons in, which are far less shy in a setup like this. I did have it as a previous uh, terraced one, but it didn't work. Um, I, I did something wrong in preparation, but you know, you live and learn. But this one is working really well, doing really good. Again, another kit, but a different style. This is more like a aquascaper style, a minimalist look open top which isn't for everyone but this one the cubic 60 pro it's got everything built in with it i don't know if i got the white or black what did i get oh there we go got the white one which is i'm glad i did actually because i think that looks a bit better i think that goes quite nicely together anyway let's get the whole thing out and have a look okay the lid which is glass the lighting filter cartridge and a little instruction manual, which I'll probably need in a minute. And now for the tank. I see there's this little bit of plastic you screw in to hinge the light on top. Almost threw that out. <laughs> Okay, and then it looks like the filter cartridge must go in there. Slots in, clips in as well, lid back on. That's absolutely simple, perfect, look at that. Right, I need to check out the light now. I need to see if we're getting some good light to, to grow plants. I'll put the lid on too to obviously simulate exactly what it's gonna be like. So that looks to me like a decent amount of LEDs in one spot. It's given us a decent amount of light on the bottom as well. I reckon I can grow some carpet and plants in that light in all honesty. It's gonna take a while, they're gonna be slow growing, but they're gonna do well if we get that nutrient rich substrate in. And I've got a good amount less left in this packlet of Nutri Base. Apparently this is like sold out everywhere since I've been using it. Um, everyone else has been giving it go as well. And the reason for that is because it works so well. So not only is it good for plant growth, it also contains like uh, startup bacteria as well, like dormant bacteria. And when the water's added and everything like that, it just gets the tank going straight away really well. So I might as well use all of what I've got here. And uh, most of that went on the light. So up next is going to be our main nutrient layer and for that we're using aquatic compost. Now you can get this stuff anywhere that sells like pond goods, so like garden centres or dedicated pond shops. Basically it goes in baskets that sink under the water and you put your lilies in there and things like that so it doesn't cause any spikes in nitrate, nitrite or ammonia but it's really really good for long-term nutrients. So that's the nutrients taken care of. Um, I've also put some root tabs in and amongst all of that as well. So that's just gonna give us real long-term growth basically to our plants. And I now need to cap all of that off and I'm gonna be using this, it's Mano Base Black. It says black, but it's got other sort of flecks of color in it as well. It looks really realistic, I love it. So it's from Colombo, but it's also like a porous material. So it's really good at harboring beneficial bacteria and pulling in and locking down nutrients that are in the water columns and waste from the fish as well. So yeah, it's a really good all round capper. Bit more expensive than just basic sand, but it does more of a job as well, to be honest. So that's all now locked down to a degree. We can add a little bit more if we need to, but look, from the side you can see, 
it's not going anywhere. And even if a little bit of this uh, aquatic compost does seep through, say when you pull some plants out or something, it actually doesn't matter at all. It won't pollute the tank. Obviously you don't want a huge amount of it, but little bits coming through, absolutely fine. Now I personally think jungle style aquariums work best when you have like an explosion coming from the back with wood and then smaller plants in the foreground, but then let everything merge into one. Now because of the shape of the aquarium, which is kind of viewed from this angle and this angle, I'm gonna make it explode out from that corner. So I think we want sort of thinner kind of wood in this one, and that'll just look way better than a couple of big chunky bits, for the jungle style anyway. So let's take a look, take a look. I've used quite a lot of the smaller stuff recently. Well, I've got quite a lot here. I've got some of this uh, vine wood. I've got some smaller pieces of uh, manzanita. They might qu work quite well as well. So far, we've got a very straight line going across there. Now, I was gonna put another piece right in the middle coming up high, but that's gonna block off most of the light. We wanna be careful of that. So I'm just gonna bring a piece. I've got this sort of arc shaped piece, and I think we can have that coming out from there. And then that way, we're still getting the light coming down and be able to get in all the plants. Yeah, so just kind of like to the side here somewhere, like this, but no, I need to prop it up. Lift it there, place this one underneath there we go it's coming together a bit better i still feel like we need way more height with these two side pieces though they can go higher without blocking out too much light so what i want to do is maybe put some stones behind them and just lift them up one up there and one up even higher on the other side height in an aquascape is really really powerful you see in fact in this bag here i've got a load of like old crushed lava rock that'll work perfect and a bit more aquatic compost seeing as we're going to be going even higher in this area, just so the plant roots don't have too far down to go. Then the uh, lava rock on top. There we go from the side that you can see way, way higher. And now when we put in our pieces, we should sit a lot closer to the, to the top of the tank. There we go, see, much more difference in height. They were level with this one before, but now we're reaching right up, which is really good. I mean, it is a bit annoying that all three pieces are the exact same height, so maybe I can just twist it slightly. Kind of a little bit better. Maybe if I bring this one up even more, that sort of fit there. Don't worry too much. It looks like a swan now. Like, don't overthink it. I think there's some wood there. It looks really nice. <laughs> That's enough, isn't it? Now, I already know that this wood is gonna try and float, so I'm gonna stick it to some contact points on the rock with some glue. And I've got some cyanoacrylate super glue gel. This is from Superfish as well. Such a lifesaver. I've got a couple of pots of these because I get through so much. So I won't need a huge amount because uh, this rock here has actually got a pebble that I glued onto it a while ago. So just a little dab in that front section, a little dab on that one, and a little dab on that one, and we should be good. Now that is all locked down. Let me zoom out a little bit. So we've got some good height. Remember, there could be stems all in the background as well, because any jungle tank needs to be completely chocker in the back with stems, doesn't it? But we need more details in this front area. And I'm thinking that decorative uh, sand we just found, bringing that all into that foreground, just a little bit of it for the details around the stones. You won't see a huge amount of them by the time all the plants are in, but uh, I think it'll just add to it a little bit. A few smaller cereal stone first though, just to bring it forward a little. And then before we add the decorative, I just want to pull this one away a little bit, just so that uh, we can get that decorative sand going right up to the front of the glass. I think it might look silly otherwise having like three different colors in that section. It'd be a lot easier if I just moved that rock, wouldn't it? And now this sort of decorative sand can go in. I'll be very gentle with it though, because I don't want it to sort of pull all that gravel down. Just filling up that front edge first, and then we can sort of move backwards from it. Oh, that's a bit ugly, that stone. Eh, <laughs> uh, is it? Nah, it's realistic. I'm keeping it. There we go. So now I think, anyway, 
we've got like a really naturalistic sort of look there. And we can put loads of diff different little plants. I've got some Monte Carlo Glossostigma, small creeping carpet and plants that can go in that front area. And it should look amazing by the time we're done, especially for the fish that's going in. I've not even told you guys what's going in here yet, have I? Should I leave it for a surprise? No, you've probably seen in the thumbnail anyway. I'm gonna be putting in these guys, which I've had for about a month now, but they are looking so, so good. Hang on. There we go, these rocket killer, look. If, you can literally see why they're rocket killifish. These males are absolutely stunning, look at these. I got these from um, Made Ahead Aquatics a while back. I knew they were gonna sell out quick, so I got them before I went to America, actually. And uh, I'm so glad I did, because I don't think there's many left now anyway. But yeah, I've got a good group of those to go in. But that's all the hardscape, substrate, all the nutrients, everything sorted. What we can do now is actually start planting the whole thing. So with the planting, what I like to start with is that middle section. Get some ferns in there, some boosters, some anubias, you know, your standard kind of stuff. Work out where it's gonna be best and just get that in first. Now I've got a lot of really cool plants to choose from, stuff that's waiting for me to use and stuff that's already in tanks as well. So for instance, it would be foolish of me not to utilize some of the stems in the uh, 200 Tetra tank. Also, we've got some, um, umbrosum stuff. I can't remember exactly what that's called. My cramphum umbrosum. Just, just go with that, just go with that. We've got some nice pieces of hydroculture pattern saying that. Over in this tank here with the uh, rainbow fish, this is where you've really got all the hydroculture Japan look. <laughs> it's all just coming out the top, so there's loads to choose from for that. This is my latest ecosystem setup, which has got a tinge at the moment. It needs a little bit of a water change to get rid of that because there's no filtration in there at all. So that's the only real way to clean the water in there. But there's lots of stems already growing to the surface at the back. I mean, this is gonna be due a whole big uh, update video, trim up, replant, cleaning, everything. Well, not cleaning, because I, I don't have to clean it. It just looks after itself. But I mean, just removing those tannins. And then down here is where the bulk of our plants are gonna come from. So we've got um, Microsorum Windelov there. We've got carpeting plants this side. You can't see because it's misted up a bit. We've got a row of booses. We've got a row of Anubias. So yeah, loads to choose from. But we want Java Fern first. Just get that focal point. So yeah, we've got this Java Fern Terrapus Greens, which is uh, from Aquafleur. Look at the quality of that plant. Am I showing you properly? There we go. Look at that. It's so good, so vibrant. Big piece as well. I want this to be the like, main showcase piece. Does that make sense? You know, the main bit you're gonna see in the middle, just remove all the rock wall, or most of it. You've got a nice little root system. Look at that perfect plant. So yeah, I want the main one, kind of, no, right dead in the middle actually, for this piece, because it's just, it needs to take center stage. There we go, look at that. And we can then have some windel off to each side as well, looping over a little bit. And one on this side of the tank, in this little gap is gonna work perfect. Oh yes, I already know this is gonna be good. So that's looking absolutely great. It's like a bouquet of flowers in there, isn't it? <laughs> and we've got loads of open air in the foreground. Now for that, I've got some other epiphytes. These are epiphytes, stuff you stick to the wood because the roots pull from the water column. You don't have to push it into the sand. Yeah, I've got more down in my snail and shrimp tank. <laughs> They're all huddled there because we put in some uh, algae wafers for them. But yeah, if you look at the background there, these are all rocks that have got like different pieces on. So some have got mosses on, some have got um, Anubias, so I've got Bulbitus. I want that piece of Bulbitus. There's also um, some boosts at the back as well. I want those. So here's the Bulbitus piece, which will look so good coming out of that section there. Look at that. Such a nice different tone of green as well. Also will do well in the lower light at the bottom. And then I've got this really cool Anubius and Boos Island here, look. I think that goes really well. Stand up a bit. Yeah, I really like that because I like the way it's all sort of flowing into the foreground. And then we can just put sort of creeping plants all in this other area, which eventually will fill it in. Um, being that it's going to be like low tech with just a, a gentle sort of medium light, medium to actually with all the amount of ferns and everything we've got in here, I'm going to call this low light. It will still do well. It'll just take more time which I'm absolutely fine with, to be honest. So up next is the Monte Carlo and the Glossostigma. Three pots of each should be enough. I don't want to completely like cover everywhere. We'll have some room to grow into, don't we?
So I'm really, really happy with that so far. Now, all that's really to add is the stem plants and a few more bits of detail if it's needed. But to do that, I like to fill the whole tank up first, see where we're sitting with uh, these plants because they're going to lift up slightly, aren't they? And then I can see exactly where I need stems as well. So I've collected up a nice group of stems. We've got Rotunda folia, Rotala green, we've got Hygrophila polysperma, and that one is as well, Limnophila siciliflora, uh, Rotala wilici, and then we've got some Hydroculture pan. I'll probably get a little bit more of that as well. But what I like to do is keep them in these bunches that I've got them, and to just wrap a little bit of this filter floss around the base, and then just stick them in a plant weight and then I could just slot it straight into the back and into the sand and it all sits exactly where I want it to and it just keeps growing as well, I keep trimming and replanting. It's all good, I find it's like a perfect way of starting a tank with just these little bunches that I can take out from my other tanks. Now obviously if you haven't got a bunch of other plants like these, you're gonna have to go and, go and buy some, um, not to worry, get one pot of each and within like a week or two, you can make your first cuts and you can replant and you'll have double the plants. Within a month, you're gonna have like quadruple the amount of plants that you started with because these stems, they grow so, so fast. It's a really, really good investment stem plants if you, after a planted tank, start with the stems, they grow easy and they actually really help the tank as well. Get really stabilized because they require a lot of nutrients to grow because they grow so fast. So they will pull those nutrients from the water column and that means that algae has less of a chance of coming because there isn't any excess nutrients for it. Oh yeah, I'm really, really pleased with how this one's turned out. Like that density in the back that you've got there, which is only gonna grow taller as well. There's nothing left to do now, apart from put the filter on and obviously the fish to go in as well. But yeah, slightly misty, that should clear up very fast. So it's now been a couple of hours since we filled the tank up, turned the filter on, it's gone crystal clear and we are ready for fish. So as I said before, all the fish are in this tank, so I need to catch them all. There's quite a few in there, but it should be a good number to go in that size tank. Oh, I've got one already. Oh, very easy to, to catch these guys. One better, buddy. There you go. So that is all the rocket killies collected up. It didn't take too long, actually. They're quite easy to catch. They sort of just waited for me to scoop them out. So we could now put them in, but before we do, I want to add some kind of cleanup crew. Now the tank's way too new to start adding a ton of bristle nose and amanos and things like that. So I'm gonna put in some snails, ramshorn snails. They're my favorite. And I've currently got an absolute ton in this tank here. This is, it's a bit hazy. Uh, that's because I fed them yesterday and Kate didn't realize and she fed them as well. So you can see there's like algae wafers crumbled up everywhere. I'll do a water change in a minute, which I, I never do on this tank to be honest, but uh, that could be an ammonia spike or something like that. So I'm just gonna do a quick drain on that. But what I'm loving about this tank is I do kind of overfeed it compared to everywhere else because it gets those ram swans snails breeding and I just absolutely love them. So if you overfeed a tank, you get massive amounts of snails. If you don't, then the uh, population regulates itself. So I've got a nice little collection here. It's bladder snails and it's uh, ram's horn snails. Look at that lot. <laughs> like I say, that'll be enough for that tank. They will breed, but the babies won't really survive because they won't have a food source. Oh, look at this one just floating up. Where are you going? <laughs> You've got an air bubble trapped underneath. There we go. 
Now I was just gonna have the tank on this desk for the demonstration and then put it somewhere else, but I'm really, really liking it here and how it looks. Um, I'm thinking I'm gonna turn this whole area into a nano tank section because I'm not really feeling the racks anymore. Racks are really hard to sort of maintain tanks because the gap is small and oh, it's just really aggravating. I'd rather have like several benches, a few less tanks, but overall better quality. Now, one of the reasons I didn't do that already is because there's no power source to that middle section. So at the moment, look, I've just got an extension lead running all the way around here and then everything's sort of plugged in. But I've just ordered one of those sort of safety cable rampy rubber things to go across here so then i can get power to here safely that's not going to be tripping up all the time and i can have this one i can do some shallows some bowls i can do some other nano tanks and i just think it'll look really cool you know as you come in the door then you've got a nice row here you've got a decent sized gap to be able to walk down look so it's not tight at all i can actually get to all my tanks, still film them all. I've also added this uh, drawer system here with the bowl on top, because I want to do another bowl soon. I miss having a bowl. It's been a long time. I haven't had one in the studio at all yet. That bowl's massive and a really, really nice one to escape as well. Anyway, enough of that, enough of the future plans. It's time to get the killifish in. Okay, the killies are ready. Let's put them in. Oh, look at that. Awesome. <laughs> Whoa, that male is absolutely huge. In fact, there are a couple of absolutely huge males. Look at that one's tail. They look like little race cars, don't they? Well, rockets, I guess, taking off. <laughs> yeah, so there's that massive one there, and there's a couple of really big ones at the top, males as well. I've got a mix of male and females for sure. Like, I'm pretty sure that one there is a female. Much, much smaller, not a lot of coloration. And they're down the bottom of the tank as well. I don't know if they'll settle down there too much. I think they're sort of an all over fish, but I kind of want to just keep this one as like a species only. I like the idea of it being the rocket killifish tank. Maybe add in some cleanup crew, you know, some small little bristle nose or something like that later on. But yeah, it's, it's an absolutely awesome look. I'm really pleased with how this turned out. I love that the boost is giving us a little pop of, you know, different color. I was gonna add some red plants, but I just didn't want to spoil that jungle look. And with a jungle tank, you, you typically, you don't really have a lot of sort of reds. You just go for that green, natural vibe. And the water's so clear, it looks like there's none in there. I love that. Now, obviously this is a brand new tank, so we need to add in some beneficial bacteria as well. There's one cup full and there's two cupfuls. We've got a lot of plants in here that were in established setups already, so they'll also have beneficial bacteria on them, but it's best just to boost everything up. Now, in the morning, I'll come in, I'll test the water, make sure we've got no sort of nitrite or any ammonia spiking. If we have, the water comes down, it goes back up again. But with this amount of plants and this low fish load, we should be absolutely fine. Now, I didn't experience any jumping in the other tank, but the water level was lower. We're right near the surface here, so I am gonna add the lid to this one. It'll also help with evaporation and just keep the water in. Just make sure the fish stay in as well. The lid has got these little uh, clips on the side. And they just slot over the glass. Get it right, there we go, like that, perfect. Do you know what, I reckon this would be one of the tanks that my wife would actually be with, okay with at home, say in the kitchen or something like that, because she doesn't like tanks without tops on, because she's constantly worried of fish jumping out. She's fine with it all in the studio, all the lights are off because we're uh, past light on time. Uh, she's fine with it in the studio because if anything happens, which very, very rarely, I mean, only once or twice since I've been here this whole time, as have I had fish on the floor. I very rarely get fish jumping, but that is one of her biggest fears. But as this tank matures, it's gonna get better and better. I already love it from the start. You know, that's one of the benefits of having multiple tanks. If you guys haven't got them already, once you get a win and you start learning how to grow plants, you'll inevitably get another tank. If you do, put your trimmings all into that tank and then you can build new ones and they can look full and great straight away like this one. Obviously some work still needs to be done on this bottom area, but it won't take long with this lighting for that to grow really, really well. Look at the Achilles. And they still won't be like properly colored up yet. I mean, it's gonna be stressful moving them from one tank to another, but they, they, they look awesome straight away. Awesome fish, aren't they? Mm -hmm. 